she's a, a health and wellness coach, and she really empowers people to be the very best versions of themselves. So I want you to give your hand to Harriet. Good evening. Spence, you stole my first question, oh. which was who here gets nervous just at the very thought of getting on stage? And I put my hand up, so I'm gonna put my hand up again. Right. Thank you. Thank you for playing ball. <laughs> and who here feels that they have a very important message that they like to get out and that they're desperate for the world to hear and they want to make an impact? Fantastic. Almost everybody. So how would it be if I could share with you today my top tips for getting over your nerves so you can get on stage and get your message out there and make that impact and change some lives and get out there and change the world. Yeah? Woo! Okay. Now, I don't feel all that nervous, although my heart's been kind of beating kind of fast right now. But those of you that knew me at the beginning of my pony journey know that when I turned up at my first pony training 18 months ago called Speak Without Limits, I was so nervous that I nearly left because I thought I was going to be sick and throw up on the carpet. Um, when that was, it was in a tiny room, probably half this, just the, the size here, and a quarter of the amount of people. And when I thought at the beginning I was going to have to get up, which I was going to, and have to say my name, and that I was there because I was nervous, the adrenaline kicked in, the fight or flight, and I nearly left. And because I didn't, because I was brave enough to just stay and ride with it and, and let the adrenaline flow through me, I've learned over these 18 months how to get my message out there. And it's been a phenomenal journey and I've been able to make an amazing impact on an awful lot of people, which is brilliant. And my mission, and I shared this with the lovely Anne earlier, my mission is to inspire contagious belief in the possibility for life changing transformation. So to get up here tonight and to be able to tell you guys some of my tips from going from being, you know, feeling sick on the carpet to standing on stage really often. Um, is, is an absolute pleasure. So thank you, Spence and, and everyone, for letting me do this. For me, it's not just about getting on stage. It's also about what happens way before I get on stage. And the very first thing that has been vital for me and that I really want all of you to take on board is planning and preparation. Know what you want to say, know how you want to say it, and practice. Practice several times so that you know what phrases come out right, you know which bits sound awkward, you know the bits that you might forget, you know that it might fit in the right time. So planning and preparation is really key. After you've done your planning and preparation, there comes the part where you're on your way to the venue. And for me, this is a really important moment. And it's a really crucial time for me when I remind myself of what my mission is and why I'm doing it. And so I, I sense myself in the fact that I'm going to get out of my own way and pass a message to some people that I'm going to speak to and try to um, remind myself as well that I can make my nerves mean whatever I want them to mean. If I choose to make those nerves and they kind of peak just before I get on stage, I can make them mean that I'm really nervous and I might fuck it up. Or I can make my nerves mean, if I choose to, that my body's getting ready to give a really awesome talk, all my circuits are switching on, I'm excited, let's do this. And I don't know if anybody here knows this, but it's exactly the same brain pattern for nerves and for excitement. And if you imagine going on a first date, it's that nervous and excited thing. So you can choose what your nerves mean. It's absolutely down to you to choose that. So I'm on my way, I tell myself that my nerves mean excitement and I may tell, remind myself of my mission. And when I get to the venue, I always get there a bit early if I'm speaking. I never get there at the last minute because that's very stressful. And one of the things I really like to do, especially if it's somewhere I've never been to or never spoken to before, is get there early enough that I can get on the stage when there's nobody here. And I would really recommend that if you want to be, feel comfortable on stage, that that's something you do. Because when you know what it looks like, you know what the room looks like, 
it becomes a whole lot easier when you actually get up and stand on the stage. That helps me to feel less nervous and to feel really grounded. And then when I've done that, I go and stand at all different points around the back of the room so I know what it's going to be like for you and for you and for you seeing me up here. And I remember to make eye contact, not just with the people right here at the front, but with everybody at the back as well. So getting comfortable with the stage as well. Um, after I've done that, I go to the bathroom. And, and, and yeah, I might have a few, right? <laughs> but actually what I do is I pray. And for me, I have a really strong faith in a higher power. I'm not religious, but I have a strong faith in a higher power. And I pray and I connect again with my purpose. I connect again with the reason that I'm here and I ask to get, get the hell out of my own way. Because nerves are really about wanting other people's approval. I connect with the impact I want to make, the message I want to give, and what is in it for the audience. And I ask my higher power to guide me, to help me to make the impact that the audience most needs that in that very moment. And then I come out of the bathroom, really calm. The next thing that I do, and this helps me so much, is when the speaker before me, or it's five or so minutes before, I don't know if any of you saw me, I know Lisa did because we were making eye contact. I stood up. I didn't say sitting in my seat, I actually stood up because nerves can get quite phys physiological and it can be quite physical. So by standing up and allowing myself to breathe and really feeling my feet on the ground and feeling really calm and, and the breathing thing, it's as much about breathing out as it is about breathing in. Because deep breaths in are great, but if you don't remember to breathe them all the way out, you can get even more nervous, and you need your brain to be working really well. And that's the point as well, um, where I'll fire off an anchor. Um, I do this, I squeeze my right fist. Now, I was shown how to do this by somebody that I work with. She um, showed me that I can anchor something that I do physically to a memory in the past. <laughs> And there was a time, it was back in June, I know quite a few of you were here because I made you come for my birthday, but it was a charity fundraiser. And I was speaking on stage um, about quite a sexy topic and I had a lot of fun on stage. I felt super confident, I loved it. The feedback from the audience and interaction was amazing. And so when I recalled what that feeling was like, I squeezed my fist. And now at any point in, in any walk of life, um, it could be on a date, but it's really handy on stage. I can just squeeze my fist and return myself to that peak state of feeling really confident, feeling really excited, feeling like I can do this and it's going to be fantastic. Um, so if you have a time when you felt very confident and you can remember the kinds of things that you were feeling, the kind of ways that you were speaking to yourself in your head afterwards, the, the engagement, then set yourself up with an anchor. Um, I, it works very well for me and, and I know it will work for you as well. The last thing that I do, after I've done this very complicated routine of praying and anchoring and breathing and mindsetting and all those things, is that when I first get on stage, I stop and I make eye contact with several people and I take two or three big deep breaths, I feel my feet stay really grounded, and I smile, and then I start, and that helps as well. My heart is usually going like crazy at that point, and because I've done the planning and preparation in the days leading up to it, I know what I'm going to say the first minute or two, very well rehearsed. So the, the, the practice will carry me through, and it will it all goes very smoothly. And, and something that can happen on stage that's happened to me many times and may have even happened during the course of this talk, and I'll tell you afterwards if you come and ask me, is that you can forget stuff and you can think that you're completely messing it up. When that happens, it's easy to let the nerves get the better of you or to feel a bit like a rabbit in the headlight. But you don't need to do that. You can use a dramatic pause if you want to. Well, you give yourself a little bit of time to think. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> That's slightly thrown me. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm going to use the dramatic pause while I gather my thoughts. <laughs> so to recap, there are many things that you can do. But I think the most important thing that you can do is acknowledge that you're nervous and put lots of things in place that will help you to get over those nerves. Plan and prepare. Get in the right mindset that allows you to embrace your nerves and let them work for you rather than seeing them as a problem. Have fun on stage. Use your breathing to work with you. And above all, if you fuck it up, just have a dramatic pause and everyone will think you're making a very <coughs> important point. Thank you. Okay, ten, ten minutes. Very nice. So we're going to pass over to Claire. Hello. Oh, I loved it. Every time I've been here, I've got to see you speak, which has been really nice. Um, I love the way that you have become so comfortable in talking about your own vulnerability. Like the, Most of that was all about your process and your vulnerability, and you own it so well, and I'm sure anyone watching it that's still nervous about owning their vulnerability sees the beauty in it. So I want you to work on owning your knowledge and your authority. I know it was right at the beginning of the speech, but when you said what you was going to give us and you was going to teach us how to get over our nerves and own our nerves, you wasn't really in your power like you are when you're really happy telling us about how you fuck up and how it goes wrong. And I love that because I, I love watching that from people. But because I've seen you grow, I want you to work on your authority now and owning it and, and having your power and saying, look, I know my shit. I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to tell you how I mess up, but I'm going to tell you how I messed up so I do it right. Because that's, that's where you got your growth. And with the anchor thing, I'd like you to have spoke, taught us actually how to do that, like made that an actual exercise, because then that's a really nice takeaway. And you could have even, <laughs> I'm getting creative on your speeches, I was like, oh, I would have done that bit there. Um, because that exercise would have enabled everyone watching here, people that haven't yet got on stage, to actually almost sense themselves going on stage for the first time. So, yeah, I might, I'll speak to me after. I got really creative about the end of that, about how you could twist it a little bit for the audience. Um, and also, you kept saying, my next thing, my next thing. Maybe give each thing a little label. Because in me, I was like, toilet, pray. And it was really quirky words. I gave, my, gave the things. And rather than one, two, three, you could maybe give them weird names that suit you. But I loved it. Thank you. Brilliant. Who's next? Emma? You are next. Yes. Should we pass the baton? Don't drink your water, I've just put a nut in it and tell it's allergic. So, yeah, I was, I'm really sorry. So, fantastic. Here's the thing. As Claire said, the more comfortable you got, the further at the front of the stage you got. And the thing about being at the front of the stage, on this stage in particular, is it's really dark back here. But as you come sort of further forward, you get to see yourself a bit better because the lights are better. So we get to see you a bit more. And as you got to about four, when you were talking about peeing, that's when you came forward. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not saying that it's anything to do with that, but it was a real you story. And it was after you did your anchoring. And I, could, I, could, I, I didn't see you do your anchoring because she had the microphone in this hand for the majority of the time. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter. They don't need to know what the anchor is, you know, you know, but it's a great technique to use. The other thing is, um, and I don't know if this is the way you naturally speak, but do you keep your mouth quite still and quite closed? And the more that you open it and the more expressions that you can give, the wider it goes, the more engagement that they kind of get from you. So you do the old yawning, and you force you all to yawn. You force yourself to yawn before, and it kind of opens the back of the throat as well, helps to open the mouth, and then you roar like a lion without roaring. It's quite sexy, that. It is, actually. Yeah, come over here. And, and it helps you to open your mouth wider. The wider it is, the more sound that comes out. The less you have to use these, the less you have to rely on those. So just a bit wider, if you can, practice on it. Thank you. Very good. Okay, apparently I have to keep the mic 
further from my mouth. Did you realize your five Ps is plan, prepare, pray, pee, and present? <laughs> yeah, you go. No, oh, physiology. So but it's all kind of had a theme of Ps in there. I just was following you. Uh, okay, good. So excellent content. I mean, you've come such a long way. I remember that time in the... We often tell that story um, of you running, wanting to throw up. So there's a few things. I feel your next level is more relatability to the audience. There was lots of I do this and I do that and this is what I do. And it's a lot more like, what would you do or how would you approach the situation? Enroll us more and then go, well, this is what I do about that. Or do you know when you're standing there doing this? Well, this is how I address it. And just really enrolling us a lot more. Again, in 10 minutes, it's not the easiest thing to do. But that's your next level. Because, as you said, you know your stuff. You're an expert. But now you need to enroll the audience to buy into you even more. And that's next level. The next thing I will say is audio, visual, kinesthetic. Right? So who here knows about auditory, visual, and kinesthetic? Raise your hands. Right? If you don't, it's... What I'm talking about is the tonality she was using. So um, audio is where I am. Visual is very high. And kinesthetic is slow. So people that are very feely tend to talk a lot like this. Do you know what I mean, man? <laughs> yeah? So they're very, and, and people who describe things are very much like, and then I was walking here, and I went down the road, and then, oh my God, the bus ran away. Right? <laughs> oh my God, I couldn't believe, yeah? And that's what I want to see more in your presentation, because then you'll also enroll the audience, because we all have different learning styles. And then if you can speak more in audio, visual, kinesthetic and go through it, then you will enroll us and entice us and then you become mesmerizing. And what do you call it? A what magnet? A, me a media magnet. A media magnet. <laughs> All right. So let's give Harry a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, applause. Naughty. Round of applause. Good job.